How's it going everyone? Ben here and today we're going to be talking about whether or not being overweight or fat should keep you from getting top surgery. And I know, I know this is a very high anxiety topic for people who are overweight and fat who are trans and want to get top surgery, but I want to ease your burden by immediately saying the conclusion of this video is that it shouldn't prevent you from getting top surgery and I'll be explaining why. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because I know a lot of people in the trans community that are often shamed for their body type because mass media loves to show trans people as skinny, tall, and ve their trans mask very athletically built and that's not necessarily the case for most trans people. Most trans people come in a variety of shapes and sizes which are beautiful and they don't need to stick to a certain standard the society deems them to be valid. Most of the information presented in this video is actually taken from Dr. Scott Mosser's YouTube page where he talked about are there BMI or weight requirements for top surgery. I was inspired by that video but as a trans person I feel like I need to add a little bit more to his scientific explanation of having a higher weight and getting top surgery. And if you don't know who Dr. Scott Mosser is, he's one of the largest well-known top surgeons in the country and he also does a number of transmasculine and transfeminine procedures as well in his practice. He's also one of the very few doctors out there that actually recognize non-binary patients and recognize that non-binary patients also have the unique needs when it comes to an aesthetic appearance after getting gender affirming surgery. So yes, I do respect this doctor a lot and I incredibly respected the way he presented this case of actually allowing fat and overweight people to undergo top surgery. Dr. Scott Mosser noted himself that he personally has no weight requirements for trans patients who want to get top surgery and the fact that he has done multiple even dozens of surgeries where people have a BMI higher than 35 and he himself acknowledges that BMI is not the best indicator of whether or not someone is suitable for undergoing an extensive surgery. He also has noted that he himself has done quite a few top surgeries where the person's BMI was over 50. So why is it that, that there are some surgeons who are creating weight requirements for top surgery? And I'm going to come to the conclusion that most of these surgeons are afraid of litigation and they're afraid of performing a surgery on a type of body that they're not very comfortable with. And that says more about the surgeon's expertise and the surgeon's comfort and the surgeon's own willingness to perform a surgery than the patient themselves who want to go through that surgery. There's actually no statistically evident paper out there that shows that top surgery and weight has a correlation with increased risk of complications. There has been none. So most surgeons who create these weight requirements are creating them from other types of cosmetic procedures that have shown to have statistically evident complications with those procedures with weight. However, I'm going to put a big asterisk because I have looked through some of these studies and I have looked through newer studies and newer studies are saying that weight should not be something that keeps people from getting the surgery that they want, especially if it's a surgery that would improve their quality of life. And it just doesn't have to do with improving the quality of life. Older studies kind of have a lot of confounding variables and when you look at older studies and when you look at newer studies, the results, depending on the paper that's written, kind of goes against one another. Some say that it is statistically significant, some say that it isn't statistically significant, which is showing that we can't really come to a consensus whether or not weight plays a huge role in complications of surgery. There are so many other factors that can lead to complications. I will even argue that it's not weight that's causing the complications, but morbidities such as diabetes and hypertension that causes complications. And yes, I am going to say this, but people of all sizes have diabetes and hypertension. Actually, diabetes is one of the most common disabilities out in the world and not everybody with diabetes is fat. That is a very, very inaccurate description of who someone with diabetes is. The same goes for high blood pressure. There are numerous types of minorities that have a higher predisposition to high blood pressure and that does not correlate with someone's individual weight. A 2009 study concluded that post-operative complications were frequent in abdominoplasties, which is a tummy tuck, but overall complication rate did not correlate with body weight, body mass index, age, surgical technique, or surgeon's experience. 
Now, this is a study that was a little bit over a decade old that came to the conclusion that actually your body weight does not predispose you to complications, but the risk of complications is actually pretty high regardless of whatever type of cosmetic surgery you're getting, which is true because I am a tiny person and I still had complications after surgery. I had an infection in one of my sutures because the suture was embedded in my skin. I needed to come out and take a longer time. So it started to get infected. So I too had complications post-surgery. I also had complications when it came to eradicating my bowels. We talked about this before in that video that my partner was in at. It's a very interesting story, so go feel free to watch that after this. Another study looking at 179 patients who's undergone breast reduction in 2008 came to the conclusion that it is safe to perform large volume, large volume, which means a lot of tissue is being removed, breast reductions in the morbidly obese patient with core morbidities as in everyone else. Lastly, I want to highlight a more recent study conducted in 2019, less than a year ago, that concluded that tummy tucks with or without concurrent liposuction in obese patients is a safe and effective procedure with similar perioperative operative complication rates as the non-obese population, saying that yes, you will get complications. You might get complications after your surgery, but that does not necessarily correlate, correlate to your weight. Actually, your healing is more correlated towards your smoking usage than your weight. That's why a lot of surgeons recommend that you quit smoking for a while, for at least for a while, if not forever, because it's better for you in all aspects of health before you undergo a surgical technique because smoking actually reduces your ability to heal properly. All of these studies will be linked down below that I cited, but there are many other studies on PubMed that you can look up that's showing the correlation between being fat and having complications with surgery. You will see that a lot of them have inconclusive evidence or they have a very, very small patient population that can't allude to the larger body of people that are getting elective surgeries. Now, even though these studies use the word obese, I'm intentionally using the word fat because I think it is more inclusive towards all different types of populations, including minorities who are often misrepresented as a higher weight collectively um, that nobody really wants to talk about. So in conclusion, I want to tell you that if you go to a doctor asking for top surgery and they say that you weigh too much or that you need to lose weight for your surgery, they are talking more about themselves than they are talking about you because that means they are trying to prevent themselves from getting into an uncomfortable situation where they're doing a procedure that they're not comfortable with but they need to get comfortable with. It is then where you try and find a doctor that is more fat inclusive and is willing to do that surgery on you and explaining the risks and benefits of each of them by treating you with respect at the same time. I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you found this video helpful. Please share it with anyone that may benefit from this information and feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm pretty active on social media and I'll see you on the next one. This is Ben.